Oh, where my family? Still where you are. Still where you are. and executed by the leadership of the command in fulfillment of his police citizens' accountability charge. The IGP, sir. Labor State presents distinctive security challenges on account of the demography and social economy interplays. In consequence, the internal security space in recent times has been linked with threats of partisan, armed robbery, kidnapping, murder and sexual and gender-based violence. We are also consistently confronted with the challenges of dissecting and dealing with the thin line between the civil and criminal dynamics of land disputes, which are also prevalent in the state. Also of return concern is the traffic gridlock and the attendant occasional traffic robberies, which are compounded by ongoing road projects. <coughs> across the states, including in particular the Lagos Ibadan Highway. The crime profile of the state is further accentuated by the prevalence of illegal firearms and illicit drug abuse and trafficking. Sir, hardly does a day pass by without the ever vigilant operations of the command, recovering weapons and illicit drugs of various descriptions as stop and side points, raids of black spots, and other operational engagements, all such, with all such recoveries linked to the perfection of crimes across the state. Most worrisome in all this is a noticeable trend that indicates an increasing local expertise in the fabrication of various types of firearms, including replicas of foreign-made pistols, AK-47, and other rifles. This trend coupled with the threat of cultism, projects a potent danger to the security space in Lagos State. And if nothing drastic is done by all strategic state actors and the citizens to complement the efforts of the police in rolling back the dangerous side. In coming land of this side, we are planning to organize a conference in the coming weeks with intent to mainstream the discourse on cultism and violent crimes in Lagos and governance stakeholders and different levels of governance in the state to the evolving threat. I want to warn all police officers to take cognizance of the Police Establishment Act 2020. Torture has become a serious offense. It now attracts 25 years in prison. Oh yes. If the suspect dies, whoever is informed will be charged with murder. As they say here, that will not be your portion. 
detention every month, and we are starting this soon, a chief magistrate will visit every police station in Nigeria. During the visit, the magistrate can grant bail under the arraignment of a suspect or ask the suspect to go home completely. However, the magistrate is also empowered to report any police officer who has breached the rights of the suspect. As a matter of fact, I was just telling the IG, Section 60 of the Police Act, Establishment Act now says, every police station shall have a lawyer assigned to it to monitor human rights compliance. So what is being done today? Mr. IG, Mr. Sippi, is in line, strictly in compliance with the police assessment. So I congratulate you, and I congratulate myself. I want to pledge here today that police officers here have no cause for fear. We will represent those who may file complaints against you. But if you are also reported for frivolous reason, I will also defend you. <laughs> I'm happy to take advantage of my intervention here to let the IG know. By next week, sir, I am bringing to Abuja many judgments in which we have won cases for policemen and women who were dismissed illegally. <laughs> many of them, and if you must know, despite all those shakara on television, <laughs> and this is not being arrogant, I handle more cases for policemen and soldiers in Nigeria, more than any lawyer. So those judgments are coming. I do. I'm not alone. My wife has won two cases for police women in Nigeria. <laughs> One of them is that if you join the police as a woman, you cannot marry for three years. My wife went to court. This is not applicable to men. And the court said yes. Women, police, women and policemen are equal before the law. <laughs> the second one, a woman police, a police woman became pregnant and she was dismissed. My wife went to court and said there are men, policemen, including one top one at the material that I will mention around, who had also impregnated somebody outside wedlock. So what did this woman do? And the court said, this woman shall go back to the police force. The IG. When I mention this example, bring the judgment. I will comply with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> My little brother, one of the best president in the Nigerian Bar Association has has made a pledge to do what he has done in Lagos in a door and delta. My own, it be past that one. <laughs> I have pledged here to represent police, men and women, pro bono publico. I won't take money from you. <laughs> now we stand there. Since you have uh, tidied it around your home, I will also do something where I also come from. But beyond that, I will also take up Abuja. So I'll be talking of about four states. Mr. IG, I will take care of what Olu has done in three states in four states. And I don't know whether my colleague is here, Panera. This street is named after him. I will also get him to do something. A final one. 
I came here last week. I did not recognize this plane. I asked my driver, can you move to the next compound? Maybe they are, that's the office. You know why, sir? CP, I didn't tell you this. I saw that this place had become exceptionally clean. Because you have removed those vehicles that will not be in this compound. And I was just telling the AIG. AIG, zone two. I also want to see your compound like this. So, so, my brother, you have become primus inter pares among CPs, and that is what you have done today. I congratulate you. I have pledged silently, but I want to pledge. Officers and men of Lagos State Police Command, I am very excited to be in your midst this afternoon. I have come here today to share the new policing vision with you and to have quality time to interact with you, get to know your challenges. I want to hear from you. If you have contributions to make, I want to hear it. If you have problems you want, the, you want to share with the IG, the IG is here today to listen to you. You are all aware that I was appointed acting Inspector General of Police about two months ago. And together with members of my management team, we have hit the ground running. We have articulated a new policing vision for Nigeria, which I will be sharing with you. We intend, we are committed to having a professionally competent police force that is service-driven, rule of law compliant, and people-friendly. When we talk about emplacing a professionally competent police force, we are talking about giving professional training to our men. We are committed to giving you training that will enhance the performance of your duties. We will give you specialized training where necessary. All the departments have been tasked to come up with ways of the positioning their departments. I have with me seated the DID for CID. He has a task to come up with programs that will reposition the first CID for better and more effective service delivery. Our new policing vision is service driven. Every of our actions will be geared towards building confidence of the people, building trust in the people, and making sure that we get the necessary support that we need from the people. You all know that no police force can succeed without the support of the people. We need intelligence from our communities. Our new police, police vision is aimed at modernizing the Nigerian police. And of course, you know that modern police is community-based, it is intelligence-led, and it is technology-driven. <coughs> Everything that we are going to do will have the community in, in, in mind. We'll be ready to win the minds and hearts of the people. The community policing strategies that we are implementing, we are already, we are already reviewing it because we want results. We are shifting from the approach, from the present approach of community policing to policing diverse communities. That is, policing the communities, taking into consideration the peculiarities of each communities. 
So every community will be policed based on the needs of that community, based on the composition of that community. Everything is about getting results. I will be sharing this vision with you, and I want to, I will expect that all officers and men of Lagos Command will key into this vision. We, together, we are going to change the policing narrative in this country. The Inspector General of Police cannot do it all alone. Your Commission of Police cannot do it all alone. You must be ready to key into this new police vision, and which is aimed at changing the narrative, police narratives in this country for better. We, are going, we must shun extortion. Extortion is giving us bad image. And if I ask you how many of these officers who are engaging in extortion are already truly blessed, true blessing comes from God. If you want God's blessing, you won't engage in extortion. I used to tell police officers everywhere I've worked that God loves the policeman and he's always looking for a policeman to bless. But if you engage in extortion, you are telling God not to bother about you because he's going to bless those police officers who are really doing the right thing, who are doing the job with the fear of God. So I want to appeal to you to look forward to God's blessing. If you do this job very well, there is no way you will not get the reward. I believe, I personally believe, in the principle of um, sowing and reaping. If you sow good, you will reap good. If you sow kindness, you will reap kindness. That I personally believe, and it has been helping me. So I'm telling you this afternoon that you should look up to blessing coming from God. But before I round up, I have a good news for you. We have a president and commander in chief who is committed to the welfare of the police in Nigeria. Mr. President is genuinely concerned about your welfare and he's going to do everything to improve your welfare. We are going to be getting more support from government. You'll be equipped with whatever you need to do your job. You'll be given all the necessary tools required to function effectively. But you must also shun bad conduct. You must show commitment to professionalism. You must be professional in everything that you do. You must show transparency. You must show honesty. You must demonstrate to members of the public that you serve that you are men of integrity. Once we are able to do all this, the support that we need from the communities, we will get so easily. <laughs>